This video is made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up at the link in the description, you'll also gain access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that Real Life Lore is a part of. Follow the link below to start your free trial today. Asia is home to some of the world's largest and most powerful rivers. Many of these rivers originate on what is known as the Tibetan Plateau. This is an area located within China which contains tens of thousands of glaciers and other geographical features that serve as the headwaters for some of the largest rivers in the region. Rivers like the Yellow and Yangtze rivers which flow across China to the Pacific begin here but also the Mekong River which winds its way through much of Southeast Asia and on through Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and finally through the lower Vietnam Delta and into the South China Sea. The Mekong River is particularly important as this river winds along a 4,500 kilometer route and brings with it much needed fresh water to some 66 million people in the surrounding areas that depend upon this river each and every day. What makes the Mekong unique is that its steep descents create an ideal setting for hydroelectric power to be generated, and thus the creation of large dams along much of the river has occurred. Countries like China that are lucky enough to control the source of large rivers like the Mekong will not only use them for rich supplies of fresh water, but also for generating massive amounts of electricity with hydropower. However, when poor river management occurs, like in this particular case, the other neighboring countries downstream will often bear the brunt of reckless decision making from their upstream neighbors. You see, if the countries nearest the source take up too much of the river's flow, the consequences endured by the countries downstream can be catastrophic. Without enough water, crops will not be able to grow and native fish populations will disappear completely. The problem now is that the Mekong River does not contain enough water to go around. In fact, the Mekong River within the last year has faced some of its lowest recorded levels ever since records began being collected some 60 years ago. Much of this is due to the fact that China has already built 11 massive dams across the main river and has plans for 8 more in the very near future. This is also not to mention that downstream states have plans to build 7 additional dams themselves to add to the already 2 that are operational today. The Chinese dams, which are massive, produce a whopping 21,300 megawatts of electricity. And in order to do this, they must hold back a lot of water. If you take just the two largest Chinese dams alone, they can store almost as much water as the entire Chesapeake Bay located on the east coast of the United States, an area that covers more than 11,000 square kilometers. Despite the amazing amount of power produced, however, these dams are already having major effects on the health of the Mekong. For instance, just last year alone, the river ran so low during a drought that Cambodia had to completely turn off their large hydropower plant due to a lack of water flow. This caused the nation to endure months of debilitating electricity blackouts and caused major disruptions to the Cambodian economy. In addition to this, the altered water flow was so little that salt water from the sea actually intruded into the Mekong Delta, devastating Vietnamese farmland and caused fishing stocks in Cambodia to be depleted by up to 90%, which is a huge deal because the fish from the river make up two-thirds of the protein for the average Cambodian's diet. Although a disappointing rainy season can certainly be attributed to some of these struggles, a fair amount of the blame also rests upstream within China. With the many dams constructed over the past couple of decades, the natural flow of the river has been greatly interrupted. Before any dams were built in the early 2000s, the natural cycle of the river would cause it to rise and fall based upon the season. During the monsoon season from June to October, when it was very wet and rainy and when Himalayan snow would often melt, the lower Mekong would normally rise higher and flood, while during the dry season, the waters would recede. As waters receded, it would allow for birds to lay eggs on exposed riverbanks and for farmers to plant their crops in the rich sediment deposited from the recent monsoons. However, as several large dams were constructed, this natural rhythm of the river was forever changed as the dams are now holding back more and more water, less and less water is flowing downstream during the rainy season and perhaps even worse, more water is flowing during the dry season 
as Chinese dams will suddenly and often without any warning release large quantities of water downstream, sometimes causing the river level to jump several meters overnight and deliver devastating damage to riverside communities of the Mekong that simply just cannot react. It has also been determined that this past year, when the Mekong was at its lowest and communities that rely upon the river the most were struggling, that China essentially just shut the river off completely. Despite claims from the Chinese government to the contrary and that they too were suffering from the drought, scientific data shows that the Tibetan Plateau received more rain and snowmelt than normal for a given year. Had all this water been given the opportunity to flow downstream, the river would have likely been somewhere between 7 and 8 meters deep, but instead, as the river flowed through the lower Mekong, it averaged just 3 meters deep in most places. While China has every right to build dams and make the most of its natural waterways, it is equally as important that they think of their neighbors downstream and ensure the river can be used by all. China has, for the longest time, resisted any formal commitment to curb its construction of dams or to guarantee downstream countries a minimum amount of water. There is even an entire commission devoted just to managing the river properly entitled the Mekong River Commission, of which Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, and Vietnam are all members. This commission, which was created in 1995, was created to facilitate regional dialogue across the Mekong River Basin. However, China has refused to ever join. For what seems like a very long time now, Chinese leaders have seemingly grown more and more mesmerized by gigantic engineering projects regardless of their practicality or the effects that they may bring. Many of these dams are not even being used at near their full capacity, so it certainly makes you question what the true motive is behind restricting just so much water. Even if the Chinese government refuses to limit the construction of new dams as they should, at a minimum, it would be helpful if they could at least share river water data with neighbors and to warn them when large discharges of water will occur. The reality is that millions of people depend upon this river for their livelihood, and the river is so much more than just a source for hydroelectric power. Important steps need to be taken to preserve the river and its natural rhythm. Otherwise, the Mekong River, as it has been known for thousands of years, will likely no longer be the same in the near future. While preserving the Mekong is an important issue for Southeast Asia, over the next few decades, it is unfortunately not the only problem facing humanity today. From the health of our oceans to a world overwhelmed with plastic, the need to protect our environment is an ever-growing issue, and one way to learn more about important environmental issues like this is to head over and sign up for Curious. Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is an amazing website that has tons of top quality documentaries that provide excellent information about the top environmental issues of our time. Whether it is learning more about reducing waste or simply just learning more about our planet, there is bound to be a documentary that can provide you with more information about the important issues in our world. In addition to this, when you sign up for an annual subscription to Curiosity Stream with a link in the description or by going to curiositystream.com, com forward slash real life lore 2 you will also gain access to nebula nebula is the video streaming platform made possible by many of your favorite youtube creators with a ton of awesome original content from people like Wendover Productions, and Real Engineering. But best of all, it's only $20 for a full year subscription. So for less than $2 per month, you will gain access to all of this awesome, original, top-rated content. So go ahead and give CuriosityStream a try and get free access to Nebula when you visit curiositystream.com forward slash real life lore 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching.